welcome back my fellow electric adventure enthusiasts. It's been a couple weeks since I released a video and there's really been a lot going on. As you can see here, we're not in my wife's R1S and I'm not in my R1T. This is actually an R1S provided to us by the Rivian Service Center. Still have ongoing issues with our R1S, but I'll have more on that soon. So make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming content. But today we're gonna to take another fresh look at Driver Plus. It's actually raining a little bit here. And we're gonna take this R1S out on I-270 and do our typical test to see how it performs. Now we are on the latest software update as of the time of this recording, which is 2024.11.2. So without further ado, let's get to it. And like I do with pretty much all my videos, we're gonna be driving around the beautiful Mount Airy, Maryland area. And there's a lot of farms out here, just a lot of wide open space, then a lot of trees and windy back roads as well. One thing I wanted to mention about this R1S that we have on loan from Rivian is this forest edge interior. And I didn't think I would really like the forest edge interior. I knew I wouldn't like the light interior because the light interiors, while they look great and make the vehicle look more airy, they're really hard to keep clean. If you have kids or pets, it's really gonna be a struggle to keep that light colored interior clean. But nonetheless, this warm ash wood and the forest edge interior is just amazing. I think I actually like this better than the Black Mountain and the dark ash wood. This is definitely the one to go for. And one thing I wanna note, folks, before we get started is, for one, I've disabled all the mid-roll ads in all my videos to enhance the viewer experience. So while YouTube will show you ads at the very beginning, at the very end of my videos, it will no longer interrupt you in the middle of the video to show an ad. And it's because of viewers like you that we're able to do that. Also wanted to mention that I have a lot of good videos coming up. I have a video coming on wind noise reduction, and I'm gonna show it in the R1S. So that's gonna be a really good video about how to reduce the wind noise. I know that's a complaint that a lot of folks have. And while these are adventure vehicles, a lot of us want that quiet ride. And my upcoming video is going to hopefully help you out with that. We're also gonna be taking a look at the latest Rivian software update, which introduced ratings for charging stations, which I think is really helpful. And it also updated the rear display in all of Rivian's current and future vehicles, which is really cool. So make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Here we are driving through historic Mount Airy, Maryland. You can see they have a rail yard down here. This was actually a car barn over here, I believe and they have a train depot up here right on my left and the folks that run that are retiring and i believe they're selling it but either way they're going to be closing it down it's kind of sad that they're closing the train depot down but for them i'm sure it's happy because they're going to be enjoying their retirement but anyway folks if you're ever in maryland Make sure you stop by Mount Airy. A lot of good restaurants here, shopping. A lot of great sights to see. It's just a really nice area. When my wife and I moved out here, we looked at the area for two years before we decided to make the change. And we're really glad we did. It's been almost four years now. And last but not least, we're gonna be taking quite a few trips this year. We haven't finalized our plans yet. I'm still waiting for my wife and my daughter to tell me what it is that we're gonna do. 
But in any event, we're here on I-70. We're gonna get on I-270, but I-70 is kind of the first phase of this test where the exits are further apart, the speed limit is higher, and generally there's less merging. So this should be, in theory, should be easier for the driver plus highway assist system to navigate. Although this section of I-70 is very curvy. But we do have a 70 mile per hour speed limit. And I'm gonna engage the system here in the right lane. And I'm gonna set it at 65. Mainly because it's raining. Now it automatically set it at 70 because it's set to maintain the speed limit. But I'm gonna go ahead and slow this down to 65. One of the things I've noticed, and I even noticed it in my last video, is that the system no longer tries to go off on exits when the exit is on a turn, whether that's a left-hand turn and a right exit or a right-hand turn and a left exit. So it's definitely improved there. The system generally works a lot better. And one of the really nice things Rivian has added is the lane changing. And I'll demonstrate that for you here in a minute. Now, it's not automatic lane changing, but it's automatic resume after a lane change. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on my turn signal here. And I'm just gonna take over, and you see how it shows the arrow there. And when I get into my lane, there it goes, it automatically re-enables itself. Very, very smooth operation. Here I'm gonna try going back in the other direction. And it really works very well, and it makes long trips so much easier. You don't have to disengage and re-engage when you change lanes. That's huge. One of the other things that I'm evaluating here that I haven't done before is the low visibility. Now, because it's raining, visibility is quite a bit lower than it has been in my other tests. So this will be interesting to see how it responds. I do notice already that there's still a lot of ping-ponging in between the lane lines here. And I am getting the message in my display that there is a lane merge ahead. And like I said in my last video, Merging seems to be a real challenge for any of these, and I'm gonna disable this here because I don't wanna cut this guy off. But merging seems to be a real challenge for any driver assist system. And look, there's another Rivian. So let's go ahead and re-enable this here. It is doing it at 70. And it actually thinks this truck with a little trailer in front of us is a semi, which it's not. And the nice thing is you could see that I adjusted my speed up or down by tapping left or right. Tapping right will increase your speed, tapping left will decrease your speed. And the scroll wheel here is going to adjust my follow distance. Now, currently, I'm on the closest follow distance that I can be on, and that appears to be about three car lengths, four car lengths. And that's really good in most scenarios, but in a scenario where there's a lot of traffic, that's just enough for people to cut in front of you. And if I slide up on the scroll wheel, you can see that I have four bars there, so I can adjust this in four different settings. 
Now I'm going to set it on the furthest follow distance. So this is going to keep the maximum amount of space in between me and the car in front. This looks to be about five car lengths. And if you're going at a really high rate of speed, it might be good to have this kind of a follow distance. I tend to be the type of person that's more comfortable having a greater following distance from the car in front of me because I have more reaction time if I need to do something. But not everybody feels the same and it's not always good to have maximum following distance in every scenario either. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this back down and we'll kind of close the gap with this truck in front. And yeah, I would say that's about three car lengths. So on the maximum, it's probably six car lengths. And on the minimum, three. And if you look at the screen here, it does see that that's an exit over there. The line on the right disappeared when there was a broken white line. And it reappears when there's a solid white line. And so far, the system appears to be doing pretty well given the reduced visibility. Okay, so we're here on I-270. And it's three o'clock on a Friday afternoon and everybody's starting to get in that mode where they want to get home and, or maybe they don't want to go home. Maybe they want to go and have a drink after a hard day at the office. But nonetheless, there's a lot of traffic out here. So we're gonna go ahead and try to engage the system. I'm not gonna engage it at an awful high speed because I suspect we're gonna go in and out of pockets of traffic here. But back on I-70, when we hit a lot of heavy traffic, it did very well. It slowed down, although I would have liked for it to slow down a little sooner. It kind of came up on those vehicles a little fast, made me a little uncomfortable. But it did slow down and it didn't do it abruptly which is good. Now, on this particular road, I-270, I'm going from Frederick down towards Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia. There's a lot more merging and there's more traffic here. So we're gonna see how the system does on the latest update. The only real issue I had in my last video was that the system did a lot of ping-ponging between the lane lines, especially around turns. And it got really close in a lot of situations where there were other vehicles next to me, which made me kind of uncomfortable. And I'm sure it made the other drivers uncomfortable as well. So we're gonna see if the system's improved at all. doing a really good job keeping its distance from the car in front of me. My set speed is 62. The speed limit is 55. And I'm doing 58 and maintaining my distance from the vehicle in front. This section of I-270 is two lanes. We will later on get into a section that's three lanes. For one, you have this sign over there that the slower traffic needs to keep right. They don't want you to be in the left lane 
if you're moving slower. The other thing is that you don't have a middle lane to be able to avoid merging traffic from the right. So you either need to be in the fast lane, which state law doesn't want you to be in, or you need to be in the right lane where you're gonna have merging traffic. And we're going a little bit too slow here, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the left lane, and I'm gonna increase my speed up to 69. And we can see that it re-enabled itself, did a very good job of doing that. And when I increased the speed from 62 to 69, it did it very gradually. It didn't do it abruptly. Now, in an ideal world, when you have more traffic out on the road and you get over into the left lane that way, I would want the system to be a little more aggressive at getting up the speed. But at least in this situation, it wasn't too much of a problem. And the rain has let up a little bit. So the visibility is a bit better. We already know that the problem of it wanting to go off on the exits is fixed. So now the main issues I'm looking at here on the highway portion are how it deals with merging traffic and then also how it deals with the curvy roads. And so far it appears to be dealing with the curves pretty well. We're gonna get into some heavier curves here in a moment. Yeah, this is, oh, that's, yeah, road curves ahead. No kidding. That was a little uncomfortable. So it's telling me the road curves ahead to keep my hands on the wheel. This appears to be where the Rivian Driver Plus highway assist system has the most challenge and that is on the curves and apparently that Honda CRV has some place he has to be driving very aggressively And the speed limit has increased to 65. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase my speed a bit here. The other thing about this road is that in this section, at least, it's a higher speed limit, so 65. And this is really a good test for the Rivian system because when you get the curves and you get the higher speeds, that's where the system has a lot of challenges. And it should slow down automatically when there's a lot of curves. So we'll see what it does. Yeah, it got really close to that yellow line. Now it's getting over close to this guy over here. Uh, it's not really confidence inspiring. It seems a little better than the last update. But Rivian still has some fine tuning to make on these curves. Now I will say that the rain is starting to pick up, so visibility is going down a little bit more, and we're coming up on some pretty heavy traffic up here. Now this is this should be slowing down. Yeah, this should be slowing down a lot. 
This makes me a little uncomfortable. Okay, it is slowing down pretty good here. That was not too bad. I don't know if I would trust it on panic stops. Here in Maryland, especially on some of these more used roads like I-270 and 495, I-95, you can have periods of traffic that you go through where it's high speed, then abrupt stops, then high speed again. And I think that's a situation where it might be a little unnerving at least to use this system. So overall, I think the system has improved a lot. I think there is still some issue with curves and then also staying in the lines when you're going around a lot of turns. That makes me a little bit nervous. I would like it to slow a little sooner than it does. It kind of makes me nervous coming up on vehicles when there's a quick slowdown in heavy traffic situations. It's a little slow to get started again after you have a slowdown. It also stops a little bit short when there's an abrupt slowdown. And some of those things could cause a problem in heavy traffic, could cause other drivers to uh, get a little annoyed with you. But overall, for what the system is, I think it's great. I think it's gonna take a lot of the stress out of long highway drives and also if you're driving in places where there's a lot of stop and go traffic, I think it takes a lot of the stress out of that as well. And now that Rivian's added the automatic re-engagement after you do a lane change, I think the system is so much better and so much more usable. It's never gonna be to the level of Tesla's autopilot or a full self-driving system. But I don't think you need a system like that every day. Unless you're operating a robo-taxi, I really don't think you need a system that advanced. I think the Rivian system does more than what the majority of owners are gonna need it for. What do you think about the state of Driver Plus? Let us know down in the comments section. As always, remember to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you get notified anytime we add new content. And thank you guys so much for watching.